continuation of last week's video where I made a new computer desk, this video I'm going to be making a matching filing cabinet. Stay tuned if you want to see how I do it. If you missed the video on the desk, then there is a link for you in the description below. The computer desk is made with a solid oak top, then the rest of the body was made from oak veneered plywood. To match, I'm using the remaining sheet of plywood for the cabinet. Thankfully, I had just enough for this box. If you're interested in making a desk and filing cabinet, then I'll link to the set of plans for both down in the description. The plans include a full material shopping list and a cut list. I started by using my track saw to cut the plywood down to rough sizes, the two sides and the top and bottom. After getting the rough sizes cut, I took them to the job site saw and trimmed them down to their actual needed dimensions. Using some red oak veneer to match the plywood, I used an iron to edge band all of the sizes that will be exposed on all four parts. To make life a little bit easier, I want to stain the parts before assembling them so that I wouldn't have to be working in a uh, small confined space while finishing. So next I placed my four pieces on some bench cookies with the pointed tip attachments on and gave everything a light sanding using 220 grit paper. I brushed everything off and wiped on a coat of stain to match the desk, which is a color called Provincial. And just a tip while staining, if you start by staining the bottom of your pieces, then you can flip them over and finish the top without having to stop and let things fully dry and therefore wasting time. That's why these pointing tip attachments are really handy. I let the stain set, wiped off the excess, then let it sit for a few hours before spraying on a de-wax shellac clear coat. While letting the four body parts dry, I moved on to making the drawers. I went with half inch plywood for these and a drawer construction that is very simple as these won't be overloaded with stuff. I applied Tybond Original Wood Glue, then used a brad nailer to hold everything together so that the glue had time to dry. Now I'm calling this a filing cabinet, but honestly, my house is pretty paperless and things are stored electronically. So these drawers won't really be used for hanging files. So all three of mine are just a normal box. However, if you'd like to hang files in yours, then before assembling, you can take a straight bit and a router or use your table saw to cut a rabbit on the top edge of each drawer side. This will create a lip for the file folders to hang from and no additional hardware will be needed. After getting the drawers constructed, I gave everything a good sanding, including some drawer faces that I cut and will attach later on, then applied a few coats of white paint. I left all of that to set and dry and hopped back over to the body now that all of these parts were done drying. I started by attaching the sliders, wanting to do this before assembly to again save myself from having to work in a confined tight space. Wanting to have the drawers actually inset into the body of the cabinet, I mounted these sliders three quarters of an inch back from what will be the front edge of the cabinet. I pre-drilled, making sure not to punch through the side, then used the screws that came with the sliders to attach it. I personally went with full extension drawer slides with the soft close feature, but honestly, this soft close feature is a pain in the butt, so I don't think it's worth the additional money. It's nice when they do work, but it doesn't take much for them to glitch and not close that last eighth of an inch. To assemble the body, I'm going with dowels. But of course, if you don't mind seeing screws, then you can screw the top and bottom in directly to the sides. Since it's oak plywood, I picked up an oak dowel to match. I would drill a hole at each corner, then glue in a length of dowel, using a saw to cut off the excess length. Once the glue was dry, I used a flush trim saw to knock down the dowels flush with the top and bottom at each corner. On the bottom, the casters cover up the dowel locations, but the top ones are left exposed. So I later came back with a little bit of stain on a foam brush and dabbed them with color to match the cabinet. Then I once again moved things to the porch and gave the entire body a top go to finish for protection. I went with the same aqua coat water-based finish as the computer desk, which dries very quickly so that after only about 30 minutes, I was ready to start attaching the drawers. I started off by keeping the sliders together and setting the drawer in place between them. You can't see, but there is a spacer on the bottom pushing the drawer up off the cabinet body. I'd pull the slide out so that it's flush to the front and attach the two front screws. I could then pull the drawer out further and attach the middle screws on each side. By attaching drawers this way, you can drastically reduce the chance of misalignment. Now that the front two screws are in, I could then remove the drawer completely and attach the back spot. And it might be overkill, but I always throw a tape on it just to make sure things are going on level. 
Oh, and I almost forgot to attach these two front rails. These rails are placed in between the drawers and are attached by using pocket holes that you'll never be able to see. It was a little tricky getting the sucker to stay into place while setting the screw, so I set a clamp to rest it on while driving it in. And I intentionally did not put on the back to the cabinet yet so that I could have access to things from both sides. And this really came in handy. After getting the first rail in, I repeated the drawer attaching process until all three were in place and working. Next, I attached the drawer faces with two screws from the inside, then started mounting the handles. To do this, I always place a piece of painter's tape on the center of the drawer so I can make all of my pencil marks, locating where those screw holes need to go. Once I have the holes drilled, I remove the tape, push through the screws through the back, and attach the handle. And there we have it, a box with more boxes in it, a place to store a whole lot of stuff that will be out of sight and therefore probably forgotten about. But it does match the desk and looks a lot better than the old set that Cody was using. So I am happy. If it weren't for all of the time you have to stop and wait for finish to dry, you could actually complete this project in just an hour or two. But even with stopping to wait on the different finishing steps, it only took me two days to complete. Don't forget, if you'd like a set of plans to build the filing cabinet and the desk, and there is a link for you down below. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you're having a good week, and I will see you on the next one. Actually, before ending, I wanna say a big thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and supporting what I do. If you aren't familiar, Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with over 19,000 classes with topics covering videography, productivity, design, and so much more. Premium memberships start off at $10 a month, but for the first 499 people to use the link in the description, you'll get two free months of Skillshare. These spots go quickly, so be sure to get in there. I personally think it's important to always be learning and improving, but even more than that, being an entrepreneur is very important to be competent in multiple areas, such as accounting and design and time management, and Skillshare is a great resource for learning those things. So don't forget, the first 499 people to use the link in the description description will get two months of Skillshare for free. Again, thank you for supporting my channel Skillshare and guys, it might be basic, but just don't ever stop learning.